Okay, so I'm Mark. I'll be introducing Mongo for us. Um, I'm actually allergic to large groups of people, so <laughs> it's going to be some, somewhat interesting, for sure. Um, who am I? Well, I'm born in Britain, in Hastings, which is sort of famous for one thing, and someone getting shot in the eye in 1066. <laughs> I've been living in Malaysia for 15 plus years now. Uh, I came out for a three-week holiday on my 18th birthday, and I just didn't get back, didn't get back on the flight. <laughs> Open source fanatic, and I mean ex WordPress of the expert. <laughs> <laughs> if this had taken place six months, I, I probably would have been on the WordPress panel and, and screaming at anyone for not using it, WordPress and money. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I was using it a lot, uh, and then I, I went to a company where, <coughs> where scaling came into the equation. And uh, yeah, WordPress and scaling, well, I mean, it's not so much WordPress, it's MySQL. My sequel sucks, really, so. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I explore things. My, my specialty is a geolocation. I do a lot of Google mapping and polygon queries and that kind of stuff. Um, hail from a front-end UX development sort of background. My first programming language was Flash. Yeah. Back, in, back in the old days where, 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 where there were two separate programs. You had one for the animation and one for the... Action scripting. Yes. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I shouldn't love databases. Uh, yeah. But then I found MongoDB. Um, and by MongoDB, I guess I should really be introducing NoSQL. If, if you were to go to Wiki and do a search on that, it's going to tell you a bunch of boring stuff. Basically, it's going to say that NoSQL doesn't have ACID compliance, and it's going to say that it doesn't use schemas, and people are going to say that without those things, it you know would be crazy. But um, Something Hans Zarkov once said, you know, he said, don't empty my mind, I've spent my whole life filling it. That's kind of how I felt when I, when I first started getting to grips with NoSQL. It was trying to unlearn everything I'd learned with relationships and tables and, uh, and just having the freedom. So I kind of believe in the right tools for the right jobs. I mean, I personally think that ACID compliance at core is cumbersome. Um, you know, it's a, it's a bunch of stuff that not many of us really need. I mean, how many of us are building banking applications? <laughs> one, okay. Uh, yeah, just one. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think that, you know, external relationships outside of your application are complicated. I also think that external logic outside of your application is just insane. Uh, my personal preferences are, to, you know, to control the relationship and the logic all from within inside the app. I want to use the fastest database for transferring data. Um, I want to maintain as few languages as possible. My specialties are PHP and, and JavaScript. With those two languages, I can start, you know, making databases. I mean, what, what, you know, what's this new revolution mean to us? It means that things are really going to change soon. It means that for the first time, designers, front-end developers, can finally start building the applications that they want to build without contacting server administrators or, or, or going through a bunch of stupid stuff. Uh, with, with MongoDB, I can develop in PHP and JavaScript. I don't need to open up PHP my admin. I don't need to change tables. I don't need to worry about schemas again. If I want to introduce a new table and I want to introduce some new fields, and that table doesn't exist in MongoDB, you know, my app's going to go to the database. If it's not in the database, the database is going to just build it for me. It, I mean, it, it's clever like that. Um, so yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I did a lot of. I guess when it came to scaling, I did a lot of research on, on NoSQL databases and what was best for our needs as a, from a kind of CMS point of view. And I quite quickly fell in love with MongoDB. The, you know, the main reasons are it's open source and adaptive. It's available for OSS, X, it's available on Linux, it's available on Windows. It's got drivers for PHP, for Ruby, for Node.js, for Python. I mean, it, it covers everything. It's production proven. You know, some people are going to say, well, no, it's not. But NoSQL in general is quite new, and uh, you know, considering how new it is, MongoDB is production proven. I mean, Foursquare are using it, Craigslist are using it, SourceForge are using it. So, out of all the NoSQL solutions out there, I mean, certainly MongoDB is the most production proven. It's fast. It's got replica sets and sharding built in, which means you're basically getting backup, you're getting load balancing built in from day one. You don't have to install extensions or reconfigure things. You can do some really advanced database queries through JavaScript. And again, for me, that's important because I know JavaScript. I don't know, you know, that crazy SQL query language, which is in, you know, it's in English almost. It's like, 
you've got to write in English to get results back, and if you, you know, you put the full stop in the wrong place, or the, you know, you didn't do your grammar correctly, <coughs> it's going to come back with some, some poor stuff. So, I mean, if you know, if you can understand JavaScript, you can do advanced queries. You can do anything that you can imagine. It's got great geolocation support, and, and for me, that's important. It offers, at the moment, it offers polygon searches, and it offers proximity querying, a bunch of stuff like that. My favourite feature of MongoDB is definitely GridFS. It's, um, does anyone know or not know GridFS? I mean, yeah. It's a file, it's a, it's a media storage. It basically allows you to, to, to store and serve your media from directly from within the database. And if you're using replica sets and sharding, that also means that all your media is going to be backed up and load balanced. Basically, it gives you S3. You know. uh, and, you know, it's SQL friendly, which is important. By, by SQL friendly, I mean that a lot of the queries, a lot of the syntax, a lot of the ways that you do things are going to be familiar to, to SQL developers. Yeah, it's not always... Not always Compared always. to the other ones. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, history of MongoPress. To be honest, when we started, we, we, we thought we'd build a plugin for WordPress. We thought we'd build a plugin, we'd get the, all, the, all the queries coming in, and we'd filter them, and we'd send them to MongoDB. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, but I mean, it was going to break a lot of stuff. Uh, well, and none of the existing plugins would have worked with it. Um, so at one point, you know, the, ne the next question was, well, maybe we should fork WordPress. Maybe we should fork it so that we can have better control of it, especially because of the UI. I mean, there, there's no denying that WordPress has the best user experience out there. <laughs> <laughs> but was it worth it? I we'll mean, talk around. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't worth it. Uh, you know, essentially, WordPress is still going to use, and, and, and the same as Drupal with the, the MongoDB extension, it's still built on a MySQL architecture. Um, and to kind of, you know, to, to use a CMS with MySQL architecture, then push that kind of stuff into a NoSQL architecture is just silly. So. Uh, after some time, we thought, okay, let's let's do it ourselves. So MongoPress is now actually a standalone CMS. It's something we've completely built from scratch. The reason we picked MongoPress name is because I registered that first, thinking I was going to build a plugin. And, and to be honest, I've, I've also lifted quite a few of the, the nice things out of WordPress. I've lifted the language appy, the plugin appy. Uh, there's a lot of things that, that's going to make MongoPress very familiar to existing WordPress developers. Um, so what you know? What are the main problems with WordPress? I mean, they're mostly MySQL. It's built on MySQL, so it doesn't scale well out of the box. It's built with MySQL in mind, so it's using you know tables, relationships, and a bunch of other stupid stuff. <laughs> it's built with publishing in mind. I mean, from day one, it was a blog blogging platform, and everything else is now an extension of that. It's now kind of they forced it to do other things. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a publishing platform. <coughs> we wanted something different. We wanted to build an, an application platform. We wanted to build something that was extendable and easy to customize, that you could build anything you wanted to. So, enough of the small talk. Yeah, that's, that's basically introducing MongoDB, I guess, which is important. You've not used it already. An important disclaimer before I continue and show you MongoQuest, please bear in mind that we really are only at version 0.213 which means we're only 23% of the way towards what we would consider our, you know, what we would have wanted to have as our first release. But we wanted to get it out there, we wanted to get some feedback, we wanted people to know about the project. Um, we're in, in the moment, we're in the process of the 0.3 branch, and what we decided there was to completely rewrite it from scratch again. We started with a blank canvas, and, you know, what MongoPress was started as a prototype, it was started as a proof of, pron proof of concept, which grew and it's, come, it's become a little bit messy to be, to be honest. And we know that and we, we want to improve upon that. Uh, you know, one of the things that's interesting with WordPress also is the Backpress project. Has anyone heard of the Backpress project? Anyone <coughs> used the Backpress project? It's a framework that are automatically released that allows you to build any kind of application you want using a lot of the functions and familiarity of WordPress. The problem is it's been it was kind of an afterthought, it was the last thing they did. They, you know, they built WordPress, they built BB Press, they built Buddy Press, they, bunched, they, they pulled in a bunch of stuff that they thought would be quite cool for a framework and they sort of cobbled it together. It's got 6,000 files in there, there's no <laughs> kinds of stupid things and, you know, there's, there's no documentation on it, it doesn't make sense and it's incredibly hard to actually build an application with it. I mean, it's a good idea. If they'd done that from day one, 
which is what we're doing. We've, um, we've now kind of shifted our attention to a project called MongoBase, which is available on GitHub. It's a framework for rapidly building any kind of MongoDB app. Um, it's allowed me to build quite a few apps in this last couple of weeks, uh, quite quickly. So the focus is building this now, building MongoBase, and to use that for all of our core products. One of those products would be MongoPress. And you know, we're going to do it right. We're going to do it from day one. We're going to have the framework available for other people to use. Or die trying. Yeah. Um, Hans Zarkov gets mentioned quite a bit. He, he works for us. He's our chief scientist. He's, he's promoting MongoPress quite a bit. In case you didn't know, he is a fictional character. Um, inspired by Flash Gordon, which you might be able to tell. Okay, so some of the MongoPress features. I'm not trying to say that the other CMSs don't have these or do have them. I'm just saying that this is what we have. So <laughs> it's, open source. it's open source. It uses the GPL v3 license, which WordPress doesn't use at the moment. They're using the GPL v2 license. There are some, 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 good, some good differences for you guys. You should check them out because I'm not going to tell you about them. It's extremely fast and instantly scalable. Out of the box support for replica set, sharding, and even engineers. Um, it's incredibly secure and search engine friendly. What, what we did is we pulled apart the WordPress security functions. We, if you don't know, if anyone has tried to do that before, that's also spread out in about 50 or 60 different files all over the place with some strange names. We pulled all that together. I mean, we don't believe in a. a I can't say that word, but we, you know, the one where you try and hide stuff. I could say it several times and I sound stupid. But, uh, so we pulled it all together. We figured out how WordPress did their security and we found out some of the flaws that they had and some of the ways that we could improve upon that. One of the things is the SHA-256 salted encryption, something that WordPress aren't using. I think they use it 16. I think it's a very old one because they need support for PHP 4. We're going to PHP 5, so we're allowed to do some cool things with that being one of them. Uh, we've also segregated the usernames and the user passwords into two separate <coughs> places, so if you get hacked in one, you're not going to get both. We've, oh, pff, I've really got to learn that word. Obfuscation. The bit between the, the username and the password, <laughs> so that's another layer of, of, of stuff that makes it hard. And, you know, it, it's search engine friendly. You're really British. It's... <laughs> okay. Search engine friendly. Um, you know, by that at the moment, the only things that we have are all the A and image uh, tags can be filtered through through the apply filter, through the apply filter function that we're familiar with. Uh, but I mean, say that it, 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 it's done. We, we've launched a couple of sites, and they've gone pretty much straight onto page one or two of Google quite quickly. <coughs> so the proof is in the pudding. Some of the other things: it's completely flexible and entirely customizable. One of the things I, I, I don't like about WordPress is how hard it is to theme the administration panel. It's kind of the one place that they want to be WordPress, and they want to make sure everybody knows it's WordPress. I mean, it's good. So, I mean, I guess there's some, some merit in that, but with MongoPress, the, in your theme folder, you can add an admin, admin folder into that theme folder, and that will override the default administration panels and allow you to completely customize the way that you want your administration panel to be, and the features that you want to make available from the administration panel. In addition to that, it's the, the, the content can also be controlled by themes and is flexible. Content structure, I should say. By that, I mean... We, we don't have post for we don't we, we don't specify from day one that you're going to have posts pages and comments because that would be a publishing platform. I mean we say you have objects because objects make sense to MongoDB. Um, so with that in mind, you, you can create any kind of structure you want, any kind of taxonomy, you know the type of the object that define that, and all of that all of that sort of setup can be controlled from within inside your theme at install. You can also um, dump in a load of HTML files and create more blog posts and pages. It's a little bit like Jekyll in that sense. So it's really easy to deploy. I mean, you want to create a theme locally, and you, you start putting in content in there, and you start setting up the structure and the, the, the templating structure, the <coughs> permalink structure there. It's, it's all kind of generated from the theme. You put that online, you install it, it's going to detect that that stuff's available, ask if you want to use it, and you know your, theme, your, your site's created in that sense. 
It's fully translatable already. That's one of the cool things from WordPress that we took. It's a WordPress language app in. So if you're familiar with the underscore underscore, or the underscore e command, that's also available in Mongo Press as it is. The, going back to the grid FS, which is my favourite feature of MongoDB, we're obviously using that for our media gallery. Um, so again, I mean, your, all your media is going to be backed up, it's going to be low balance. We've also got HTML5 drag and drop file uploading, which was implemented before WordPress. Using the same, just the same, the same plugin, it uses Plupload, if any of you have used it, which is a little bit flaky at the moment, but I'm sure it's going to get better. So, it, it, I mean, it's very developer friendly. Anyone that understands WordPress or that can build a WordPress theme or plugin can already build a MongoPress theme and plugin. I mean, there's a couple of little changes, but you're going to realize it's quite easy. Instead of permalinks, we use a thing called permatrails. So, when you create a slug for your post, your object, your whatever, your page, we allow you to have forward slashes in that, unlike some CMSs or all CMSs. Uh, you know, they define it to a slug and then you've got to go off and set up some taxonomies. You know, we let you do that within the slug. You, you can create virtual folders on the fly. And if you visit that virtual folder, it's going to sort of automatically know it wants to look for stuff that's inside that virtual folder. It's going to go off and search for stuff and it's going to display that on the page for you. It's also allowing for intelligent querying. So you, you, you can, you know, there's, there's certain things you can stick onto the URL. It's going to figure stuff out and, and pump stuff back to you how you want. Due to MongoDB having geolocation at core, we've got geolocation at core. You can presently add coordinates to your object and then you can perform location-based proximity queries. Uh, most powerful of all is probably our yet-to-be-famous five-second install. I've heard somewhere that there's an infamous five-minute install. I think I've used that several times. We have a five-second install. The way we're able to do that is because, as I said before, the beauty of MongoDB is you don't have to go off and create these stupid schemas. And, and, and <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you upload the files to your server, you, you pick the name that you want for your database. If that database doesn't exist, it's going to create it. So it's five seconds. You put it up, you pick you, you, your database, you press return, you're installed, you're ready to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is not my wife, uh, but you know, probably the most important question is going to be how pretty is it? What does it look like? Um, it's not the best, definitely, but you know, it's okay. Point it. This is the current default theme that we have. It's available to look at at mongopress.org. Um, it's completely responsive. It works on browsers, it works on tablets, mm. mobile phones. Even works on my BlackBerry, which is an old model. The default, and I say default admin theme because you can create any admin theme you want if you don't like this one. Again, this is mobile compatible, also works on iPad, also works on iPhone, and also works on my really old BlackBerry. I think we got it working on your Nokia, didn't we, at one point? I think, yes, someone's Nokia. We tried it on there. This is what the media gallery looks like. You see upload, drag and drop, image uploading. You can drag off your desktop, put it in there, they're going to load up. Straight into GridFS. How complicated is it to build things? Well, I mean, I, I think it's easier than WordPress in many ways. Seven lines of code is going to get you started. Uh, you're going to have to include get header, you're going to have to include get footer. We do this so that people can't cock things up with their malformed headers. You know, you don't have to actually create the doc type and the header and the you know, close that off and start the body. I mean, you know, every web app needs that. So we include that in the function and make you use it so that, you know, things will be okay. As you see on line two there, we're going to create an option array. We're going to um, look through our objects for type with content. And we're going to display that in the style of an article, which we then process on line six through the get content. That's basically going to put your article on, on the screen and display it quite nicely. What about okay. plugins? Does anyone know what this is? Does anyone, has anyone watched Slash Gordon? Yeah. yeah. One, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I suggest you probably go out and rent the 30th anniversary DVD wow. or get a good lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got a growing list of books and filters already. There's a bunch more than that that we haven't updated because we haven't got time to do the documentation. Um, and at the moment, we've included quite a few MU plugins into Core. We've done this because you know we're not a production ready, so it doesn't matter. 
Um, ultimately, we are going to include a single plugin that is going to be a little bit like Jetpack, I guess, but much better. And uh, at the moment, we wanted to include these so that you've got an idea on how they work. Um, HTML5 contact form, we've got an RSS plugin because we don't think that RSS should be forced upon you in core. It's bloat that you don't need. If you want to have RSS, then you put the plugin in. Our RSS plugin also supports Geo RSS because we're Geo Freaks. We've got a Geo EDOS protection, which is an experimental firewall that Fendi there has built for us. We can control the header, much like the 2010 theme. We've got an analytic analytics footer and a download counter. The download counter is actually the same one that's in action on our website. Because, something I forgot to mention was, with the grid FS, we're also automatically tracking how many times every image has been viewed. We're automatically tracking how many times attachments have been downloaded. That's all stored within the meta information inside the database. <laughs> oh, thanks for letting me empty your mind. If you want some more information, on me, Mongo Press, or my other Mongo projects that I'm working on at the moment. There, there. Awesome.